first thing that we see all the time is joking and banter. And people will often say, will say, well, you know, it may be very uncomfortable, but you know what, they were just, it was just a joke, it was just banter, they were just having fun about, you know, a woman should go and make tea, or um, they were talking about, made some joke about women's football, or something like that. So but making a joke about women and women's expense is a very easy way of self, uh, self-serving. Really, you, you say it, you make women feel bad. If they don't laugh along and validate you by laughing along, well, they're, they're not very cool and they're, um, they don't, they've got to lighten up. Um, another, another way which I've noticed um, also a lot is making someone invisible. So you'll often go into a meeting, for instance. Um, a woman may go into a meeting or someone who feels they've been harassed will go into a meeting and whenever she tries to speak, her, her voice is taken from her. The thing she's trying to say or the space in which the time she has to speak is suddenly taken over by someone with a louder voice and who wants to get in f- there first. Or maybe her ideas are taken and um, th- they're taken and and used and put about as someone else's ideas. So there's an invisibility factor. First you're laughed at and you have to laugh along, then, then all of your ideas are taken, so you're invisible. And, and then the, another pernicious way of doing it is um, withholding information, going into a meeting and suddenly realizing there's been a whole email chain that you haven't been part of. And that's, um, that's often identified, or someone saying, well, well you, it's okay, you don't need to worry about that. We talked about it down at the pub last night, that's sorted. Um, why don't you just go and do this? So at the same time, you're made invisible because your task has been, or your role has been taken away, and your ideas are not, not listened to or even solicited. Um, and then women will often say that they um, are in a double bind, that the, the damned if they do and the damned if they don't. So they'll go into a um, meeting and uh, they may um, want to listen to other views first. They may be chairing the meeting and they may say to other people, please, you know, I want to hear your ideas. And um, they'll handle the meeting that way. And then they'll be blamed for, well, you know, you're, you're pathetic, you're not speaking up, you're not, uh, you're not controlling anything, you're not a leader. But then on the flip side, she may say, okay, well, tomorrow I'm going to go in, I'm going to really control that meeting, and she'll hold it, and she'll be very authoritative about why you speak there. No, 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 that's not quite right. I'm going to butt in, um, and because I think it would be good to think of it this way, always in a polite way, but nevertheless in a more forceful way. Well then, oh, you get the comment, well, she, she never shuts up. God, she's, uh, she just talks on and on. Um, so that's a double bind, and that's often, that is often something that, that women feel more than, than men, generally. Um, and then the, the last one of Berit Oss's categories, but I think there is another one, but the last one of hers is, is the really difficult one, and that's behind the bottom, the back slapping, the bottom slapping, that I mentioned the other, a moment ago, that people internalize this. The people who are being harassed internalize the harassment and the shame of it. And they feel ashamed that they've put up with it. They feel ashamed on many levels. They don't know how to deal with it because, because of this double bind. If you, if you call out the person that's doing it, they'll say, lighten up, don't be stupid. Um, I'm just making a joke. Can't you laugh along like everyone else? Or, the, or they'll um, say, well, you're, you're, not, you're weak. You clearly can't hack it. This is a man's world. You shouldn't be in this world if you can't hack it. And many women, when you have a, a female client who has had this happen to her, but has finally got the courage to speak out and say, call it what it is, this is harassment. We will often go around to other women that have worked in the same organization. And it's it's quite sad to see that a lot of other women are not who are still working there. Probably they want to keep their jobs. But it but it's more than that. They've they will also say, just as much as the male witnesses we might call, well, this is, this is a tough world. They won't necessarily say it's a man's world, but they'll say, oh, this is a really tough world. You've got to, there's a lot of adrenaline, it's tough for everyone, there's a lot of stress. If you can't hack it, you shouldn't have chosen this environment. 